Wow. So Dorothy has just been clearly using this period of time to really get amazing on the organ. Um, I do want to say before I welcome you all that um, I would ask please for prayers for Dorothy and especially for her mom, Georgie, who is in the hospital right now. So just prayers for Georgie, um, who is now in her 90s, and for Dorothy and her two sisters um, during this time. And now welcome, welcome to everyone on this beautiful, at least where I am, fall day. We are Cleveland Park Congregational UCC, and we are an open affirming congregation. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are so very welcome here. We love having visitors and invite you to tell us who you are and where you're from. Just click the visitor link that I'm about to put in the chat room and I'll send you an email. This is our last Sunday of Zoom only worship. The audio visual equipment for hybrid worship will be installed in the sanctuary this week. Next Sunday, we'll hold a practice hybrid, hybrid service with all of you still on Zoom. And on November 21st, we'll invite anyone who's vaccinated and masked to worship in person. If you'd like to come, please sign up via the link in the chat room or in our regular church emails. And those, of course, who wish to continue participating via Zoom can do so via the usual worship link. As always this morning, please make sure your devices are muted. And if you don't have your video turned on or we can't see everyone in your household, please use the chat room to tell us how many people are viewing the service, children and adults. Holly will share the announcements. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. All right. So please join us after worship for a coffee hour conversation led by William Tweedley congregation member and licensed chaplain. Some of you may remember the excellent workshop William uh, led for us a few years ago, um, and he will be doing a similar workshop today that um, I am so excited for. Um, it will focus on how we can care for one another in a healthy and sustainable manner. Uh, that includes caring for other congregation members, family, friends, and the wider community. So especially if you identify as a helper or a caregiver in any way, uh, I really recommend staying for a coffee hour today. We're so excited to have William share his expertise with us. This Saturday, November 13th, all children are invited to gather in the side yard from 10 to 1130 AM to make holiday gifts for congregation members. Please wear a mask and prepare to have fun. You can email Abigail for more information. The Faith Life Group will meet next Sunday, November 14th, from 5.30 to 7 p.m. to discuss chapters 9 through 12 of Learning to Pray by James Martin. It's been a really fruitful conversation so far, and everyone is welcome to join, even if you have not read the book. Just email Dan for the Zoom link. As Ellen said, in-person worship will begin November 21st. Vaccinations, masks, and signups are required. Just look for the signup link in all upcoming church emails. That afternoon, the poetry group will meet online at 4 p.m. All are welcome, and you can email Meg for the Zoom link. Our congregation is collecting $25 grocery cards for Friendship Place and Shaw Community Center to give individuals and families who need help making their holiday dinners more joyful and nutritious. You can put the cards through the church door mail slot, mail them to church, or email Ashley for a drop off. Next Sunday, November 14th, is the last day for this collection. We're also helping Friendship Place with its winter warmth drive by making donations of coats, hats, gloves, and other warm clothing via their Amazon wish list for those in need. The link for the wish list is in the chat room, and the deadline is November 28th. Um, as we've mentioned a few times now, uh, we do go back to in-person worship on the 21st, um, and it will be hybrid worship. And this very much has been reframed to me as um, an accessibility issue during this time, which I'm really grateful for that reframe. Um, we are still in need of digital deacons, of volunteers to help us with hybrid worship. Um, and this will help us widen our welcome. So if that is something that you might be interested in, um, you can also come to church a week early on 1114 to kind of learn some of the ropes of that. So if you have any interest or questions about becoming a digital deacon, feel free to message me or email me and I will put you in contact with Mark Turner, who has been 
wonderful uh, headlining or spearheading um, the common tech team. And I'll put you in touch with Mark and Ellen. Um, and last but not least, as a reminder, we are also still doing our racial, racial justice audit. We would love to have 100% um, participation. So if you have not done that yet, please send me um, a message and I can send you the link if you don't know where the link is. We're, uh, we're, we wanted to extend it another week to have as many people as possible participate. So you can do it up until uh, the 15th, I believe, so Monday. Thanks. You're welcome. And the link is in the chat room. <laughs> Um, and I also have a message from Don, our congregation's card sender, who requests donations of birthday, holiday, sympathy, and get well cards for our card ministry. You can email her or just drop them off at the church. And now we'll begin this morning's worship by lighting our candle of hope and healing for the world. Today's service is going to focus on waking up. In the summer of 2020, our country woke up to racial injustice. The question is, are we still awake? Please join me for the call to worship. Awake my soul, I will awaken the dawn. Let us praise you, God, sing of you all day long. Great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your glory covers the entire earth. Now together we pray. Great God of all the heavens and the earth, thank you for this new day. Wake us up to the racism, injustice, and oppression of the world in which we live. Open our hearts and ears and eyes to the suffering of so many and inspire us to create a better, more equitable, compassionate, and humane world for us all. Amen. Please join me for our opening hymn, Woke Up This Morning. <laughs> Don't you know that I woke up this morning to my mind? And 
I hope you got to look at the smile on the face of that little bass player because he broke out at one point. All right, it is now the time in our service for a time of silent reflection. When we gather for worship, we heed God's call and honor our need for Sabbath and rest. When we enter into silence, we attune our hearts and open our minds to a presence greater than our own. As we begin this short period of meditation, I encourage you to bring your full self to this present moment. Set aside any distractions, lay down your burdens, and take a deep, life-giving breath. God is with us. Let us reflect upon the week that has passed. What are the joys we have celebrated? And what concerns have we endured? Are there things we have done that we ought not to have done? And are there things we have left undone that we ought to have done? As we look forward to the week ahead, what help will we need from God? or neighbor. And what can we do to nurture love of God and love of neighbor in the world? We'll close in prayer. Source of life, for the joys we have celebrated, we give you thanks. God of compassion, for the concerns we have endured, please tend our hearts. Spirit of justice, for those things we have misdone, transform us with your love. Companion God, as we look forward to the week ahead, be ever present with us and great lover of all. As we seek to nurture love of God and neighbor in the world, guide our actions and our prayers. Amen. Holly shared in her moderator's memo this week, the scripture verse that I share every Sunday at this time from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, come to me. 
all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And so holding those words in your heart, may you rest and be assured that through the great grace and love of God, you are forgiven. What does that mean? That means that you can let go of it all. You don't need to hold on to it. Set down the burdens you are carrying. Just give them up because God has taken them away. Let go, start fresh, move forward this day, this new day, because you are forgiven by our awesomely, extravagantly loving God. And now in the arms of this God, who is both father and mother, we pray together the prayer of Jesus, our brother. And on this communion Sunday, we'll share the version by Parker Palmer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us, from each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, Mother, Father, come. For yours is the power and the glory and the mercy. Forever your name is all in one. you to unmute and share the peace and love of God with each and every one. Peace be with peace. you. Peace be with everyone. Hi, Jane. Peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you all. Hi, Carol. Um, and while I have you on the screen, Sarah and Sammy, come back. Let's all wish them congratulations on their engagement. Ah. In a spotlight for just a second, okay? There they are. Congratulations. Oh, Sarah, wonderful. Great. Yeah, we're happy for you. Oh, and as soon as you get to know Sam, you will love him too. Trust me. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now that we're done embarrassing you, <laughs> let us all put our hands over our hearts and share our prayer of peace. May peace and health be with me. May peace and health be with this congregation. May peace and health be with our city and our country. May peace and health be with this entire world. Amen. All right, so let's see who we have this morning. Oh my gosh, we have a little Anderson child. <laughs> Hi. 
<laughs> and let's see who else. Um, do we have any more? Oh, and we have Joseph. We already said hi to Joseph earlier. Do we have any other kids? No? All right. Well, then I think I'm just going to say a sweet hello and hug to our babies and um, move forward since we have communion today. And that makes our service a little longer anyway. All right. So hugs to you all. Holly pointed out to us in our um, in her moderator memo that your body cannot distinguish between a hug that you give yourself and a hug that someone else gives you. So just remember that if you're feeling a little bit lonely or sad or in need of a hug, you can give yourself a huge hug. All right. So mm, I got a little oxytocin going right now. OK. All right. So um, I believe that Callie is going to read to us from the Hebrew prophets, the Gospel of Matthew, and the book of Revelation. Indeed. From the prophets Jeremiah and Ezekiel, the Gospel of Matthew, and the book of Revelation. Hear this, O foolish and senseless people who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. You are living in the midst of a rebellious house who have eyes to see but do not see, who have ears to hear but do not hear. For your heart has grown dull and your ears are hard of hearing and you have shut your eyes so that you might not look with them and listen with your ears and understand with your heart and repent. I know your works. You have a name of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is on the point of death. For I have not found your works perfect in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard, obey it and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. Thank you so much, Callie. And um, here we go. Um, so I would like to introduce our preacher for this morning. She is someone we all know, Carol Porter. She is the artist who created the beautiful painting of leaves who, um, that is on our, some of our slides this morning. Um, Carol is a um, longtime resident of Washington, DC. We are so happy she joined our congregation a few years ago. And last summer, 2020, okay, so summer a year ago, Carol created a beautiful work of art and justice and love called We Got Woke. And she shared this with all of us um, in a coffee hour conversation last year, almost, you know, within a week of this time. Um, and that was wonderful. However, as I thought about it this year, I thought, well, one, you know, not everybody got to see it. So I'd really love to feature it in a worship service. And two, and this is where Carol is going to go with us today. We got woke. But did we? We'll start with the video recording of Carol from a year ago, um, a video, an eight minute video that she did to go with her, um, her piece of art and justice and love. And then Carol is going to speak live this morning. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carol Porter. I recently joined Cleveland Park Congregational Church. Many of you have seen me there, and at coffee hour, we get to chat a little bit. As a church member, I have been very frustrated as a Christian about the events that have transpired 
here in Washington as well as across the country. I did not go down to Black Lives Matter Plaza because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I would have gone had that not been the case. So I asked myself, Carol, what can you do on the Racial Justice Committee, of which I'm a member, to try to open up a conversation among our members, especially those who want to know about what they can do as members of our church. I have a graphic design background, many years in media, most recently at the Washington Post. I am no longer officially associated with them. I'm retired. I prepared this 24-page document and I'm just going to go through the outline of it. I'm not going to read everything because I want you to download it off the church site. You may also download this video presentation. I was very frustrated. I just didn't know what to do when I saw a lot of these images repeatedly happening over and over. And then I thought about the past. And it's just repetition of the past. We have got to address these problems. It is a matter of systemic racism in America. It has been America's original sin. Where can we do this under this problem of COVID-19 confinement? When possible, of course, we can have community outreach in our physical space in the church. But until then, we need virtual. We can have virtual outreach via Zoom. We can have movie nights, quote unquote, but I think maybe documentary movie nights. We can have one-on-one -on -one phone conversations, of which I have had many with wonderful people that I have met at our church. We can exchange ideas in a safe space. We don't have to be angry and yelling and have a rant at each other. We can give each other the courtesy of expressing ourselves. The overview of the document is something like this. There are images of the recent events of the murder of Mr. George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Breonna Taylor, a young lady who was murdered because the police used a no-knock search order. She was shot eight times. Ahmad Arbery, murdered by three vigilantes in Georgia. There have been other racist practices in our society the murder of Trayvon Martin by George Zimmerman, a vigilante in Florida, murdered 1955. Emmett Till, young 14-year-old, went down south to visit his relatives, accused of saying inappropriate things to a white woman. Later on, she recanted what he was accused of and saying it didn't happen that way, but he paid the ultimate price of his life based on the ire and anger of her husband and his friends who dragged him, killed him, and drowned him in the bottom of the river, to the bottom of the river. His body was so disfigured, he was hardly recognizable. His mother, Mrs. Amy Till in Chicago, decided to have an open casket to show the world what they had done to her son. The lynchings, it became very popular in some southern areas to use this to intimidate people of color. Some of these people had the gall to make lynching postcards, actual photographs of people hanging from trees. Strange fruit, don't you think? The ultimate terrorist organization of America, the KKK, shop owners by day, by night, they were night riders, terrorizing, throwing firebombs into the homes of African-American people. Then I talk about the press and the value of the press, an accurate reporting. I value the press. I come from a press organization, media organizations, my whole career. And to show actual visuals as well as accurate reporting is the only way to keep lawlessness under control. We have three branches of government. We have the judicial, the executive, and the legislative. 
But when these three branches do not function in an effective way for the betterment of the society that we live in, they are dysfunctional. They have been dysfunctional for a long time. The purpose of the free press is to make the branches of government accountable for their actions. Learn racist symbols and signs of hate. Many, many symbols represent hatred, discrimination, and, and true ugliness in the human spirit. Understand racist behavior. If you see something, say something. <laughs> I think that was appropriated from some of our 9-11 experiences, but you can speak up. The last section of my statement is, what do you people want? I have been asked that so many times. What, is, what do you people want? Or why are you so angry? A woman asked me that a couple of years ago and I said, I'm angry because I still see my people being beaten up, raped, murdered, and maybe I won't be so angry when that comes to an end. But until then, I have to keep fighting. I have to keep fighting for justice. We want justice. I asked several of my friends, about 10 people who I respect, to give me their thoughts. And at the back of my statement are their thoughts. I think they are very, very well thought out, very well expressed. And I hope that you will read them and think about what has been said. I just want justice. I want opportunity, fairness. I want my little eight-year-old cousin, Nate, to not have to worry about the neighborhood that he lives in, that he's going to be shot either by gangbangers or renegade cops, black or white, whatever. I want my little cousin to grow up well, and I want him to get a good education. That's what we want. Thank you so much for listening to me. I hope that some of my ideas will have resonated with you. And when we get back to church, I hope to see you at coffee hour. <laughs> Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Carol. So that was Carol um, speaking on video a little over a year ago. And now here is Carol live today. See, Carol, if you start speaking, then there we go. Let me spotlight you, here we go. Unmute. Okay, there I go. Well, I haven't watched that video in a while, and I couldn't believe my eyes. And I said, "Did I actually do that?" But I, I guess it spoke to the whole notion of, of that I was just so moved. I, I had to do something. And my dear friend David Ewing, a wonderful videographer who I've known for many years, wonderful producer, put it put it all together. So the title of um, what I'm going to say, I'm just going to read my statement and we can open up for conversation or whatever the process is, is the title is keeping it on the front burner. So good morning, my dear church members. I'm back this time to review the events of 2020 in our nation. In this world, our nation especially, events happen so quickly. In a nation of 330 million people, that's how many of us Americans there are. America is ethnic, regional, and very diverse in its population. The news cycle is 24 seven, three to four hour time differences from coast to coast. We are vast. As shown in my video made in 2020, we know the horrors that have happened. To review and to reflect on them, we must dig deeply into our psyches, some of, a lot of it unpleasant, but let's ponder now. The question is, has anything changed? 
If so, what? Did we get woke? How much did we realize? How much did we get outside of our own worlds? So here are some topics that we can review. My initial response, which you just saw, was toward the murders of Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and George Floyd. Justice, is there justice for these murdered African-Americans? Fast forward today, current hur horrors and backlash. I keep thinking about the horrific presidential election. Um, the former president and his cronies and their attempts to, to discredit the election results. The aftermath of the 2020 election of Joe Biden. And then the US Capitol siege. Voter suppression in the red states, particularly blatant, blatantly, uh, not even pretending to keep people of color from voting. The jury selection in Ahmad. Arbery's trial. Are you aware that at this point it is one African American and 11 white Americans in Brunswick, Georgia? It makes you wonder what will happen in the final analysis. The other idea that has changed that we still need to think about the Haitians who wanted to immigrate and the Afghanis who want to immigrate. Did you look at the optics of those two groups? When I saw the, uh, I guess they were immigration officials on horses beating the Haitian people for only wanting to get out of a, a country that is horrific, um, like the Taliban has been with the Afghanis to those people. What's the difference? We didn't beat the Afghanis, we left a few of them there, but I met some, I embraced them. I saw this woman, she'd been here 15 days. I tried to help her. But how many Haitians have been allowed to enter the United States as a result of their horrific government? So as I said, look at the, I looked at, compared the optics of those two groups and I said, something is not even here or just. Um, move on now to what am I personally doing? Well, I, I paint, <laughs> I make paintings. That helps me with my sanity to get outside of the constant barrage of, of bad news. <clears throat> and that helps me, I paint alone sometimes and I paint with friends. This is my family, my art family. I also try to maintain a dialogue with people different from myself to not shut down or develop disdain or uh, uh, become depressed. I, I can't handle, I, I will not become depressed over this. I pray for myself and I pray for other people. I established local social connections east of Rock Creek Park and west of Rock Creek Park. There is a difference, you know. I want to break down this hierarchy of discrimination and racism that it's that exist in some of our neighborhoods. More specifically, I get involved with a cre I'm getting involved with a creative arts project in Southeast Washington with the kids, some of whom are homeless. I will be giving an artist talk to them to encourage them to develop their talents. Geography is not their destiny. While they live excuse me, where they live should not restrict their creative abilities and development. I tell them, I will tell them to aim high and to believe we, but we will have to help them. I will help them as much as I can. I grew up in Northeast Washington. The difference is I had a family background that supported me. Some of these kids don't have that. Some of them are homeless. They're homeless and they come to that center to take a shower because they don't wanna be embarrassed because they smell bad. They have a washing machine in the center so they can wash their clothes. Things that we take very much for granted. I just go down the hall in my apartment building and I use the washing and dryer, washer and dryer. 
I also take an art and design classes at Montgomery College, which is our two-year local, uh, two-year college. Many students are first-generation college. They work, they have children. I mean, at 20, they got kids. They work part-time, but they're going to school. I talk to them and encourage them to complete their studies, go on to university for their four-year degrees. And if more, they can get more, please do it. Lastly, I give respect and expect it back from others. I want to be kind and generous when possible. And I wanna be comfortable, and I think I am comfortable in my own skin. Thank you for listening and let's talk. Thank you so much, Carol. We're not going to actually include a sermon talk back um, okay. right now, or we'd probably have, you know, we'd end up going to noon for the worship service. Um, we can talk on the 21st. <laughs> well, absolutely. So, so what I would like to um, suggest, I mean, first of all, as you said, very soon, we will actually see each other in person in coffee hour. So there will be opportunities for dialogue there. But I would also like to invite, um, and Carol and I actually didn't talk about this, but I'm pretty sure that she's going to feel fine about this. Um, if anybody who would like to sort of have a, you know, sort of, we call them sermon talkbacks, um, anybody who would like to have a conversation about um, what Carol shared this morning and about her um, We Got Woke um, wonderful um, art production um, that I hope you will all read completely. If you, you can either email me or just put your name in the chat, or if you would prefer to send me a personal chat and know how to do that, you can do that as well. But we will definitely have a We Got Woke and Are We Woke um, follow-up chat. So thank you again, Carol, so much. Welcome. And thank you also for everything you Thank do. you everybody for listening. <laughs> Thank you also for everything you are doing for those children. Yeah. All right, well, it is now time in our service for joys and concerns. Um, I will put out a very special joy for Carol and all of that she shared with us this morning. And um, I believe that Rick is going to share our joys and concerns. It is now the time in our service when we share our deep joys and concerns silently or out loud with God and with one another. I'll begin with concerns. God, hear our healing prayers for Lindsay, who is very ill with COVID. Uh, like mentioned earlier, Dorothy's mom, Georgie, Kathy and Sharon, as they receive treatment for cancer, Susanna with love, Marion with her upcoming medical treatment, Elizabeth H.'s father, who's receiving palliative care for acute cancer, and Celestine with love. God, hear our prayers for Elizabeth's family at the death of three elderly family members. Trish, that she might get her visa to visit her daughter and family in Kuwait, the people of Haiti, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Nigeria, and all other troubled places, all those who are affected by COVID, anyone, anywhere who is sick, grieving, or in need. God, we give thanks for the engagement of Sarah Pugh and Sammy Mills, Nick's silver medal at Silver Olympic soccer tournament, Catherine, Serena, and all others who are working hard behind the scenes to improve our church's physical space and accessibility. Let's just take a moment of silence to hold these joys and concerns and to share others in the chat. Let us pray. Loving God, listen to the prayers of your people. Comfort and nourish us in both our joys and our concerns, spoken or unspoken, and hold us tenderly as we face the many difficult experiences that life and being human can bring. 
Holy and gracious spirit, we're thankful and grateful for your presence as we move into this new week, a time that will bring forth its own sorrows and joys. Remind us to hold one another in love and prayer, reaching out as we are able to lend a hand, offer support, or share in celebration. We give thanks for the blessing of our congregation in our lives and pray that we might be a blessing to others in return. In your compassionate name, amen. Thank you so much, Rick. And now, and I, I will add that um, Dit just shared that our summer preaching fellow, our July preaching fellow from this year um, has been called as chaplain at Rutgers University. So congratulations to Kirk. Serena will lead us in our offertory. or I will lead us in our offertory. I might've gotten that wrong. This is the time in our service when we receive the offering in grateful appreciation for the life and work of this beloved community. During this time, physically apart, all of our expenses remain. To support the ongoing work of our church, I ask that you please continue to give via mail or on our website as you are able. I'll put the donate link in the chat room in just a moment if you'd like to give now. And if you have any difficulty, please email John Tishy, our assistant treasurer. He's happy to help out. And his email address is in the chat room as well. I now invite you to take a moment of silence and appreciation for the gift of this church and its many blessings in our lives. Give me just a moment to put that information in the chat room. And now please join me in our doxology. Now, some of you may know from having received a packet in the mail this week that this is the month of our stewardship campaign. And so each Sunday beginning today through November 28th, we will be having a stewardship moment. This morning kicked off by our vice moderator, Bruce Grimes, who is also the chair of our stewardship team. Hello everyone. You know me already, I hope, but maybe not in my present guise. As Ellen just mentioned, I'm pleased to be your vice moderator, soon to be moderator, and chair of this year's stewardship campaign. Uh-oh, fundraising. I know what you're thinking. This is going to be like PBS, where Paul Anthony and what's-her-name interrupt your favorite murder mystery, it seems like once a month now, asking for a contribution and then droning on endlessly for 20 minutes, enticing you with the golden opportunity to get yet another mug or tote bag while you're waiting impatiently to find out who done it. Well, I'm not Paul Anthony. We only come to you once a year and you won't hear us from us again until this time next year. And I won't leave you waiting impatiently for us to begin our communion service. What I will be asking over the next few weeks, along with other members of our church family, is for you to consider what our church means to you and what part you can play in keeping us strong and healthy. Our administrator, 
Meg has just sent you out all the information you need for this year's campaign. It includes a letter from yours truly, a budget narrative, colorful budget narrative, that tells you exactly where your money is being spent and the all important pledge cards. If you haven't received the package already, you will soon. In the weeks to come, I'll be telling you more about our theme of expanding our horizons, but enough for me for now. This week, we're going to hear from Julia Baxter and her family. Julia is a longtime member of our Cleveland Park family, and I had the honor a few years ago of supporting her in her quest to become a UCC chaplain. So Julia and Baxter's take it away. Thank you, Bruce. Um, we have one getting wily, so hopefully he'll be uh, with us and not go off <laughs> while we do this. But I, uh, I prepared some remarks about what does Cleveland Park uh, mean to me. I came to DC in the fall of 2010 in order to pursue a master's of divinity degree from Wesley Sem Seminary. I had a calling to become a chaplain and entered seminary without really having a church or a denominational home. I had grown up in a church my whole life, but the church and the denomination of my youth no longer fit me theologically at all. It seemed like a club where only certain beliefs or people were allowed. And when I had questions, I was told that they came from a lack of faith on my part. Being in seminary opened my eyes to all the ways we can be in relationship with God and with one another. And I remember talking to a classmate about how I wanted to be a part of a church who valued inclusivity and celebrated diversity of people and of thought. And they pointed me to the UCC. A few weeks later, I attended a Vesper service at Cleveland Park and I instantly felt so welcomed, but more so through the first year of attending, I felt like I had found a church that engaged both my heart and my mind. And I felt spiritually at home. I joined as a member after this first year and in the subsequent years, I graduated, I found a job as a hospice chaplain, I got married. And last year during the pandemic, I gave birth to Joseph. Being part of this community has meant so much to me in so many ways since I first walked through those doors. It is the place where I find spiritual renewal and respite in order to provide the support I do for my patients. It is the community that has held me and supported me when I've walked through shadowy valleys and celebrated with me during life's mountaintop moments, especially during this pandemic when I felt so isolated, being pregnant and becoming a first time mom. And lastly, but most importantly, it is through our shared mission of nurturing love of God and love of all of our neighbors that I find the values that I want to cultivate in my own life and seek to instill in my family and in our son. Being part of any community is an investment and I am forever grateful for the investment of love that this church has shown me and my family through the years and will continue to show us in the years to come. Thank you so much, Julia. We are so happy that the three of you are part of us. And yes, somebody just put in the chat, which is awesome, that Bruce usually wears a bow tie when he comes to church, but he didn't have one on this morning, but chose a 4 one for him. <laughs> so that's wonderful. So we have communion this Sunday. Um, last month, we did not end up celebrating communion. We had the blessing of the animals outdoors on the first Sunday of the month. And um, we just, we frankly never got around to it. So here we are celebrating communion this morning, and hopefully it will be doubly powerful for our having missed a month. If you do want to get yourself something to bless um, for the bread and the wine, then please feel free to do that. And I will begin by sharing a beautiful invitation from the poet Jan Richardson. 
and the table will be wide and the welcome will be wide and the arms will open wide to gather us in and our hearts will open wide to receive. And we will come as children who trust there is enough and we will come unhindered and free and our aching will be met with bread and our sorrow will be met with wine. And we will open our hands to the feast without shame. And we will turn toward each other without fear. And we will give up our appetite for despair and we will know and taste delight. And we will become bread for a hungering world. And we will become drink for those who thirst. And the blessed will become the blessing. And everywhere will be the feast. Please join me now in blessing whatever you have as the bread and cup. On the night Jesus ate his last meal, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, asking that whenever they eat it, they do so in memory of him. On that same night, Jesus took the cup of wine, blessed it, and shared it with his disciples, asking that whenever they drink it, they do so in memory of him. And so remembering Jesus, we ask God to bless these gifts of bread and wine. May all who partake of them be filled with the spirit and may they be signs of life and peace for the whole world. If you are with others, please share your bread and cup with them as the bread of life, the cup of blessing. If you're physically alone, we are together in spirit. I'll offer my bread and cup and you can eat and drink of your own the bread of life. The cup of blessing. I now invite you to reflect on the meaning of the welcome table, God's feast shared with all of us as Ralph sings our communion hymn. <laughs> Jesus, living forever. 
Please join me now in our prayer of thanksgiving. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, God, for bringing us together at your table, connected through space and time. We are grateful to have been reminded once again how much we are loved, and we ask for your help in sharing this love with the world. May we extend the welcome we have experienced here today everywhere we go and with everyone we meet. And may we be blessed with your creating strength, redeeming grace, and sustaining peace. Amen. Please join me in our closing hymn led by Latia. Very beautiful. Thank you, Latia. And so as we go forth this morning, let us, as scripture says multiple times, wake up. Let us, as Jesus says so many times, open our eyes. Let us see what needs to be seen, and then let us act in ways that only we can act. Let us listen to the call of justice, kindness, and mercy. And let us go forth answering that call. Please join me for our sung benediction.
Now, before I share Harold's postlude, I just hope that all of you on screen right now will stay with us for a wonderful conversation led by William Tweedley on how we can best be here for one another, whether or not we're a caregiver by title, but how can we best be here for one another in ways that are helpful and sustainable? Thank you. 